All right, two more things before we start diving deeper into Zebra's Core. It's kind of the basics still. Is we've learned brushes and we've learned one modifier. So if we go in here with our standard brush, for example, again, I'm going to go over here to stroke, lazy mouse. I'm going to turn on L for lazy mouse. I'm going to crank the lazy radius up. So now when I hold down shift, I can smooth and then I can sculpt and I can hold down alt and I can sculpt and then shift to smooth. One more thing you can do is if I hold down shift, you're going to see it goes to automatically my smooth brush. It changes that entire brush. If I hold down control, you're going to see it goes to mask pin. Now, if I hold down control and tap, you're going to see there's a bunch of different masks we can do, mask pin being the default. So we'll stick with mask pin for a little bit. What mask pin allows us to do is actually hold down control and we can just mask shapes out. So we're just masking and we're holding down control and just masking shapes. Now let's see, we're just really quick. Uh, hold down control. Yeah, not a whole lot of modifiers for masking in Zebra's Core, uh, but it's it's pretty simple. The basics are you can hold down control and you mask. If you hold down control and alt, you're gonna see it actually has a little minus mask. That means you're unmasking here. So you can control alt unmask. If we go down here to the masking menu, you're gonna see uh, we have a bunch of things here. So if you wanna have a mask active, but not see it, you can turn off view mask. And now if you start sculpting, you're gonna see where we have something masked, so we, we can't sculpt on it, uh, but we can't see it either. So, eh, you know, view mask is usually turned on. You can invert that mask by clicking inverse. You can clear your mask by clicking clear. You can mask all just by clicking that button. And then you can blur mask. So if we just make a mask and then you click blur mask, you can blur it out or you can sharpen it just by clicking sharpen mask. You can grow your mask and you can shrink your mask. A couple of these things you can do with hotkeys and I would suggest doing this it's a little bit faster. So if I want to make a mask, I can control and just kind of paint that on there. If I want to blur it, I can control and just tap and that'll uh, blur the mask. If I want to sharpen it, I can hold down control alt and tap and that'll sharpen the mask. If I want to invert that mask, I can control click in the document and that'll invert my mask. If I want to clear my mask, I can control drag, just like when we were dynameshing, control drag to unmask, and then control drag again to dynamesh. So control, paint on your mask, control drag, unmask. And again, control paint to paint your mask, control tap to inverse, control tap on the object to blur, control alt tap on the object to sharpen. So now if I control tap and then start sculpting, let's go ahead and do our clay brush for instance, you can start sculpting through that mask. We've learned transpose, so if we hit W, and I'm using the transpose line, not the gizmo, but you can use the gizmo if you want to. You can just um, alt tap right in the middle of there and then move that out. Or you can use your transpose line. You can tap, find the surface direction, hold down shift, and just pull those straight out. Or you can just move these things around. Or you can go into draw mode by hitting Q, grab your move brush, and you can just move this out if you'd like to. So masking is a super powerful tool in order to get some interesting shapes pulled out. Now, again, when we hold down control and we click up here, you're going to see a lot of different masking options. There's another part of mask pin we didn't talk about. So mask pin, if you draw on your object, it's going to mask wherever you color. If you hold down control and drag out here, it's going to make a rectangle. So you can just drag over your object here and just mask and then control drag out here to unmask. Or you can just go in here and hit clear in your masking menu. However, if you hold down control and start dragging this out and you hit spacebar and you hold down spacebar, you can actually move this around. So you can actually make a rectangle or you can mask a rectangle right over the eyeballs and drop it and it'll mask that area. So control drag to unmask, control drag to mask an area. You can use spacebar to move it around and then you can drag another one out and then you can drag it in there. And if you hold down alt, that's going to make it unmask and now you can unmask. So you can control drag to mask, control drag alt to unmask, control drag to mask and hold down space bar to move stuff around. And then control drag, move the stuff around with the space bar and then hold down alt and unmask. Now, one thing to keep in mind is whenever you're doing anything that uses a rectangular selection and that's gonna apply to visibility, visibility as well. You can control drag out and mask and then control drag out and unmask. And then if you go to the back of your object here, you're gonna see it's going all the way through your object. So we control drag to unmask, control drag to mask, and then you do a square here. Always make sure you go around to the back of the object because it's gonna go all the way through. You're also gonna notice it's a smaller square here and a larger square here. If you want it to be the same size, turn off perspective. And now when you drag out a square here, it's gonna be the exact same size here. We can control tap to invert that. We can hit W and we can use our transpose lines to just move those both out, control drag, control drag. And now we've got two sides. Of course, if you don't wanna do both sides, you just wanted to do one side, you're gonna to want to hold down control and then go to you know 
navigate around this way. You can hold down shift if you want to snap and then control drag this back area. So now that's masked. You could also hide visibility, but we haven't talked about that yet. So let's go ahead and um, we'll unmask here. So now we got a mouth. Now we need to mask this part off. So control drag to mask that. Control tap to invert, or you can control tap to blur. Control alt tap to sharpen. W, and then you can just kind of move this along the surface normally. You can use the gizmo or transpose lines, doesn't matter. And now you can just kind of mask shapes like that. Another way to mask, or <clears throat> another way to mask that's similar to that is if you hold down control, go up here, you can do mask rectangle. And what that means is if we hold down control, we have a mask brush with a rectangle stroke. So we haven't talked about strokes yet, but basically all it's doing is changing it. Um, if you hold down control and go to mask circle, you're going to see it changes it to a circle stroke. You're just changing these stroke options. So we have a lasso, a curve, and a rectangle. So that's really all it's doing, but it's nice and laid out for you if you want to do a mask rectangle or a mask square. In this case, mask square is different from mask rectangle. So if we do mask rectangle, we have mask rectangle selected. We hold down control and go grab that one. If you control drag, you're dragging out a rectangle. And it doesn't matter if you drag out on your object, it's still going to drag out a rectangle. So if we did that with mask pin, it's going to draw on our object. But if we're out here, we can use it as a mask rectangle. So kind of both of them. If we do mask rectangle, doesn't matter if we draw on our object, it's always going to be a rectangle. So we can do a drag rectangle here. Now this rectangle, I can you know make it long, I can make it short. It's just a rectangle. So we can control drag, control drag to um, unmask. If I do mask square and drag that out, it's going to constrain it and it's going to, and I'm using spacebar to move this around again. If uh, it's constraining it and it's centering it wherever I started dragging. So if I start dragging on this little dimple over here, I can, or his cheek, I can drag out just over that cheek and drop and it'll mask that out. Where that is, is it's using the rectangle stroke and it's not giving it the, and in, in old Big Brother ZBrush, there's a way where you can turn on a circle our rectangle and turn on center. In this case, it's doing square. And in this version of ZBrush, ZBrush Core, we have mass circle, which means you can do oblong ovals and stuff. And if you want a perfect circle, you got to go in here and select perfect circle, and then it'll do a perfect circle that's centered as well. So use your space bar and move that around. So we've uh, talked about circles and pins and rectangles. Uh, if we do mask pin and then change our stroke to lasso, we should be able to mask lasso. And then if you hold down control alt, we can unmask lasso as well. Now uh, we got mask curve, which is useful. So we control drag and then we can control drag out a curve. And basically it's going to mask wherever that gradient's pointing, it's going to mask straight back to that line. So if you can hold down control, make another curve here and hold down alt, and then it'll unmask straight back to that line. Another cool thing about curves is you control drag out and then tap alt once. You can do a curved line and you can tap alt once again. You can do like a bezier curve. If you hold down control and drag out and tap alt twice, you can do a sharp turn. So you can tap alt once for a curve, a bezier curve type, and then alt twice to do a sharp curve. And then you can mask in that direction here. And of course, again, it's just control drag and you're using spacebar to move around. So control drag and then alt ta uh, tap twice to do a sharp turn and then tap once to do a a bezier curve and then tap twice to do a sharp curve and then hold down alt before you let go and then it'll unmask. So you can do very intricate masking and unmasking using that curve stroke. There's not a mask option set up for that so you're just going to know how you're going to have to you go in here and do the stroke type. Uh, and that was in mask pin. So by default mask pin I believe is dots stroke so you can mask with dot stroke and that's basically just drawing. Mask with a freehand stroke is very much the same. You're just masking with a freehand stroke drag rect. If you mask with drag rect, you're dragging out uh, a shape. And in this case, we don't really have an, it's just kind of a circle. Now, if we change our focal shift, and you're going to want to hold down control when you change your focal shift. If you don't, you're going to be changing the focal shift on your standard brush or whatever brush you have by default in here. We'll make that back to zero. So hold down control, change your focal shift to negative 100. And now when you drag it out, it'll be a very sharp mask. Control drag. If you hold down control and make it a focal shift of 100 and drag it out, it's going to be a very soft fall off mask. So by default, this is set to zero with control. There we go. Um, hold down control and we just drag out a, sh a shape. Now we can hold down control alt and tap and sharpen that up. We can control tap to blur it, or you can go over here in your masking menu again, control alt out here to clear it. 
Now, if you go over here with a drag rec stroke and you go into your alpha menu, and let's say we choose a star, and we control drag out, now we can control drag out a star shape. Now you're gonna see it kind of fades out when it gets to the edges. That's again your focal shift coming into play. That inside to outside of your brush there, when we drag that focal shift, is controlling that. So if you do a negative 100, and we'll go over here and drag it out, now it's gonna stay crispy all the way to the edge of my brush because our focal shift is very tight. If we go over here and crank that up, it's gonna be very faded. So you gotta kinda of play with that. So by default, when I'm using alphas, I want to mask pretty sharp all the way out to the edges. So I'll change my focal shift to negative 100. And you can do the any alpha in here. We'll do an arrow, hold down control and drag. You can go in here to a circle and then control alt drag and you can unmask if you'd like. Control drag to get rid of all the masks. You can also, if you just drag out, you can see the shape here. So you can use a space bar and you can move this around and then drop it and then do the same thing. Go in here and hold down Alt and then unmask. Let's change it to, instead of doing drag rect, which you're basically dragging out a rectangle of the shape you wanna do. If you do drag dot, that's gonna take your alpha and just drag it onto your mesh here. So if I go in here and change this to a star, control drag, we can just go through and drag dot stars. If you want to make the stars bigger, make your brush size bigger, and it'll make your make your stars bigger, make your brush size smaller, it'll make your stars smaller, like so. You can just drag dot those around. Now you're gonna see when I did that, if you want them to be consistent size, you're gonna to want to not change your camera view too much. You're gonna hold that control and start dragging these out. If I move my camera away and start dragging them out, they're gonna be big. If I move my camera really close, they're gonna be small. And Big Brother ZBrush, there's a dynamic draw size to where you can move your camera around and keep them consistent, but in ZBrush Core, it doesn't seem to have that functionality.